<clears throat> Matt, as we're live. All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, it's good to be with you uh, remotely as it is. We are beginning the meeting held in accordance with resolution 2020-016. And uh, we'll start with a roll call from our city clerk. Certainly, Mayor Brooke. Here. Commissioner Sarah. I know he's here, thank you. Here. Commissioner Vignola. Present. Commissioner Simmons. Here. Vice Mayor Carter. Present. City Manager Babinick. Here. And City Attorney Hearn. Here. All right, very good. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna rise and ask you what if you do the same for a moment of silence <clears throat> before we do the pledge. Thank you very much. And uh, John, if you'd be kind enough, kind enough to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. My pleasure. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it which stands, stands, one, one nation, nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice for all. for all. All right, thank you very much. <clears throat> Those of you watching at home, I hope you are safe and, uh, and taking advantage in any which way you can uh, within the rules. So we uh, will next start with a virtual meeting statement. Is that what you have, John? I do, thank you, Mayor. Great. This is consistent with our resolution 2020, which you just mentioned. And this is due to the ongoing state of emergency as a, re as a result of COVID-19. This public meeting is being held using communications media technology in accordance with resolution 2020-16 of the City Commission of the City of Coral Springs. The city has taken several measures to ensure the requirements of section 120.54 Florida statutes, as well as the spirit of the Florida Sunshine Law is complied with during this unprecedented time. Accordingly, this meeting is available for viewing live on City TV, Blue Stream Channel 725, Blue Stream Channel 25, and 25.7 and ATTU verse channel 99. Online also at www.coralsprings.org backslash city TV and can be heard live on city radio 1670 AM. For those individuals who do not have access, we have provided access outside. Public comment will be received by phone and email. The local call in <laughs> number 954-344-5900 to submit written public comments. And I believe we've received at least one so far. Please complete the form located at www.coralsprings.org backslash public comment. For those attending a uh, uh, physical live stream at City Hall, if there are any, we have a method for public comment available if you are outside by the garage and a city staff member will assist you to participate. Having said that, Mayor, the meeting is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, so you are able to make a comment if you're a member of the public and these are all the various ways that you can do so, uh, including safely coming to our chambers uh, but there are much better options available for you. So uh, right now we're going to begin our, the rest of our meeting with a proclamation. This is Fair Housing Month, and we've been requested to proclaim the month of April 2020 as Fair Housing Month in our city. And I'll give you a little bit of background. Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1968, the Fair Housing Act, as amended, prohibits discrimination in the sale, rental, and financing of dwellings and in other housing related transactions based on race, color, national origin, religion, sex, familial status, pregnant women, people securing custody of children under the age of 18 and handicap. This housing month is celebrated each year and we bring awareness by providing educational sessions on the latest trends, emerging issues and laws surrounding the fair housing, surrounding fair housing in local communities. So you have the proclamation in front and you'll see that therefore we, the City Commission of Coral Springs proclaim April, 2020 as Fair Housing Month. Thank you, staff. Next up, we have our public comment. Uh, Deborah, I know we have at least one uh, speaker or one comment from the public, if not more. Yes, we do, Mayor. The first speaker we have online is Mr. Joe Marrera. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioner, C 
City staff. Good evening. I'm glad that everybody's doing well. The question that I have tonight is, if possible, can we provide an answer somewhere along the meeting? Is what is the percentage of poor spring residents that have completed the census form? As we all know, these numbers are very impactful so the long-term benefit of the community. And I was wondering if perhaps uh, somewhere within city staff marketing, they could create some type of graph that will show the percentage of those residents that have filled out the form and also the potential ballot benefit that the city will derive from the federal government as a result of those numbers. So visually, Joe, it might stimulate some people that have not filled out the form to do so. Joe, if, if you don't mind, at least for me, there were portions of your comment that were a little scratchy. Would you mind sharing us with again what your request is? Yes, Mr. Mayor. I was wondering if we could have the percentage of residents that have completed the census form to date. Under, understood. Uh, we actually do have that number at an appropriate time later through our city manager. I'll see if he can share that and what the progress has been. Uh, and I think there is also something that our marketing team is up to at this juncture. Uh, but if, if that, that, I will make the pleasure of the city manager at the appropriate time. Thank you for being here, Joe. Okay. Uh, my pleasure, Mr. Mayor. Deborah, we'll go to any other public comment. Mayor, I'm not aware of any other signed speakers at this time. Great. Uh, so we will now go on to the next part of the agenda. We won't pull an answer for that question just yet, but Joe, stay tuned uh, if you'd like, and that answer may come about later on during this meeting. We first have the ratification matter of Emergency Order 2020-11. It's amended and reissued essential business, required sanitation, and required social distancing. I'll hand it over to John. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and I, I will, as we did last time, uh, take any questions on all three and walk you through all three and we could do a, one motion if that works for you. For, for the that, that works great, John. Thank you. Super. So this is the one that um, uh, is our central business. As you recall, we uh, uh, did a uh, emergency order only allowing um, essential services and businesses to be open and did uh, social distancing. There were a couple of different modifications. Uh, uh, one by the governor, uh, and he did. Uh, the governor's office did clarify, though, that they were not the ceiling and simply the floor, and we could we could continue with our ordinance. So this is reissuing what we had. We have uh, have several avenues. If anyone has a question of whether their business is essential and what they can do, it does allow people to go to their businesses, even if not essential, to to keep and maintain them. And we are answering questions, and and staff is answering questions, doing a great job with this. Um, constantly, but we we're getting good feedback on the clarity of it. So that we're happy with that. The next one um, is the use of cloth masks. Now we're necessarily behind what we're doing as far as orders. This one was when we came out earlier to urge the cloth mask. Subsequently, the county has, uh, has done an ordinance requiring it and we have adopted that, but that will come back to you at the next meeting. However, any emergency order we do, we need to bring in front of you. So this one is coming back for that. The electronic bid package submittals. This is for procurement. This allows for virtual procurement. Um, again, though, we are providing every avenue that, it, that anyone could possibly need. So we urge electronic bid submittals and almost everybody has done it, if not everybody at this point, but if someone cannot, they don't have the technology to do that, we are providing a drop off. Uh, they let us know and, and, and we'll ensure that uh, we get that. So we are able to have our procurement up and running and and, uh, and being open to anyone that wants to participate. So those are your three orders. Uh, I know we've kept you updated on these. And so if there's no uh, uh, issues, you could take that as one motion. Great. Thank you, John. And you and your team have been doing an incredible job in the attorney's office. We really appreciate it very much. Thank you. Um, you're very welcome. And I, and I will say uh, uh, all the staff is, is, is participating and helping us. That's awesome. So our city commission, do you have any questions at this juncture? 
Okay, well, I'll take a motion then. Move to approve. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, carries unanimously, thank you. Next is item number five, ordinance 2020-107. It's a public hearing, first reading temporary signs, Julie Krolak. Right, and, and Mayor, I, I will read the title um, for you. It's in order to the city commission of the city of Coral Springs, Florida, amending section 1806 of the development code entitled temporary signs, requirements according to zoning districts in order to extend the temporary rights of way signs pilot program provided for conflict, providing for severability, providing for uh, codification, providing for an effective data. As you said, we'll open it to the public and see if anyone's out there or if anyone sent anything in. Just so you know, this is simply extending it. We have adopted this way back in January 16th of 2019. It was a pilot program. We extended it to June. We were preparing to come back with an ordinance, a substantive ordinance on that. However, community development, based on the circumstances we have, um, really wouldn't be the right time to, to, to pass this. Um, without having full engagement of our public. So we're just gonna continue, our recommendation is to continue this, this, this program as is. And within 90 days after the emergency um, has cleared, we will come back with a substantive ordinance addressing it. And uh, if you open to the public now, I don't know if Deborah knows about it. Great, we will open it to the public for a public hearing. And Deborah, if you'll let us know if anybody wants to be heard. Yes, Mayor, I do have one person, uh, Mr. Joe Marrera. Great. Welcome back, Joe. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate your time again. I just want to take a moment to say thank you to the staff for bringing this forward. And I hope the commission will be in favor of supporting this extension. As we all know, all our businesses are in desperate need of any type of help that they're able to obtain and I'm hoping that providing this release to them will benefit in some way to maintain their business. Thank you. Welcome. Anybody else, Deborah? No, Mayor, I do not have anyone else. All right, sounds good. So uh, we don't need a presentation from Julie. May I hear a motion? Move to approve. Second. Okay. All right, moved by Vice Mayor. I think it was seconded by Sean. Correct. All right, wonderful. Thank you, good to see you, Commissioner. Good Any see discussion? You. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Carries unanimously. Next is the uh, consent agenda. We have items six through nine. Are there any pulls from the commission? Seeing none, may I hear a motion? Move to approve. I saw I saw Commissioner Simmons, so I'm going to take him as the movement. <clears throat> no, as the uh, seconder. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, carries unanimously. Thank you. Next is policy formation and direction. Item number ten: General Contracting Services. This is a request to approve the estimated annual expenditure for LOI number twenty. Dash B011 General Contracting Services from 300,000 to 700,000. It's a request to approve. Mayor, um, this uh, came to the commission already uh, as far as the list of contractors go. Uh, we had some additional work that was being done over at the charter school that uh, had to push the uh, price up on this a little bit. Um, Rich Mashad is available for any questions you may have on this item. Any colleagues have a question? Nope, we're looking good, great. So no questions, I'll entertain a motion Move to, approve. to approve. All right. Second. Got a first and a second, any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Carries unanimously. Next is item number 11, computer equipment peripherals and services utilization of S F WSCA. Mayor, this is a, a, a contract that we use to uh, buy <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of our uh, laptops and, and those types of items. Uh, this is a, a, a national contract. Um, we're asking for approval to expend up to $550,000. Most of this is uh, part of our normal computer replacement program. And uh, Stephen Dyer is available to answer any questions on particulars on this item. 
Great. Does anyone have any questions of Stephen? No. All right. No questions. May I hear a motion? Move to approve. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Carries unanimously. Uh, next is Horticultural Services Citywide. This is a request to renew the contract for Horticultural Services RFP 17B124, including four different companies. None of uh, the bidders that were potential could have been, were, were in Coral Springs. Is that correct, Frank? That is correct, Mayor. This original RFP went out, I believe, in 2018. Um, these companies, this is a renewal for that contract. Um, none of the original bidders of this contract were Coral Springs-based firms. Uh, we've been happy with the work that's being performed, and uh, Rich Machad is, is available for any questions you have on this item. Great. Thank you. Anyone have any questions? All right. Seeing none, may I hear a motion? I'll move it. I can. All right. Moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Carries unanimously. Next is regarding the travel soccer program. Mayor, um, <clears throat> I'm going to ask uh, Rob Hunter and uh, our purchasing team, uh, Lewis, to uh, give us a little bit of background on this and kind of talk you through this process. This has been a long process uh, that was actually uh, posted sometime last year. Uh, it had the the original RFP uh, was was uh, not satisfactory met, so we ended up reposting or re uh, submitting an RFP. Um, so Rob uh, and Lewis, if you want to talk us through this a little bit, give a, a brief uh, summary and then they'll be available for any questions, Mayor. Thank you. Lewis, you want to start with the uh, procurement process first? Yes, absolutely. Not a problem. Uh, this was actually competitively bid out. Uh, it was bid out. Uh, I can give you the exact date. Uh, it was advertised in the Sun Sentinel on January 26, 2020, is when it was actually put out. Uh, there was a non-mandatory pre-bid meeting on February 4th, where we had multiple vendors show up, where we gave an explanation uh, as to the bid process. It was held in the Everglades room there at City Hall. Uh, we had the bid opening on February the 12th at 2 for this RFP 20G154, and we had seven proposals received. Uh, we had um, the evaluation committee meet for review of the proposals in a short list meeting on February 20th. And it was a full review of, of all the proposals and it was uh, shortlisted. It was shortlisted, shortlisted to two. Uh, letters were sent out to the shortlisted vendors on February the 21st, the very next day to update them as quickly as possible as to the, the evaluation committee's uh, determination. Uh, we had the evaluation committee set a second meeting for presentations. Uh, it's essentially, initial presentations were set up. Uh, I'm sorry, on March the 3rd, uh, they presented the shortlisted vendors. Then there was a secondary meeting where they met to discuss. Um, we met with, I met with Rob Hunter to go over the agreement and the comments with the evaluation committee on March 18th. Uh, everything was reviewed and then it was submitted to legal for uh, their review of our documents and the potential agreement. Rob, I don't know if you wanna put any discussions in or any explanations on your end. Uh, yeah, I, I think we're uh, pretty excited for this. Uh, we have a competitive aspect to all of our um, sporting groups except for soccer. So I think adding a, a competitive development program to our soccer program for the city is going to be a, a great um, uh, improvement to our already existing soccer program and our recognized sports. Um, I think it's been a long time uh, coming that we have a recognized uh, program in our soccer program, being that it's, uh, we have the largest numbers in that group. So uh, I'm actually looking forward to the challenge of uh, helping uh, Roger and Ed uh, build a program here for the residents of Coral Springs, a competitive soccer program that I believe is much needed and will help enhance our programming uh, for all our uh, uh, residents and uh, uh, sporting groups and soccer groups. So uh, I'm, I'm excited about it. 
I'm glad, happy with the, the the choice that they picked. I got to sit and meet Roger personally after uh, the procurement process was done. I answered questions during it, um, but I got to sit uh, more personally with him about it. And I, I think he's got a good mind, good vision, and a, a good uh, methodolo methodology to uh, bring us a, a really, really quality program to the residents of Coral Springs. All right. Well, Mayor, I'm before you move uh, any further, I just want to let you know we uh, lost the live stream on the web. Live TV still working, city, ra city radio still working, but the live stream on the web has gone down. They're rebooting the system right now. Um, so I just wanted to make sure you were aware of that before you moved on to a vote. Okay. So are you asking us not to move on to a vote just yet or just letting us know? I would ask uh, John to give us a uh, direction on that. Well, I just got that text that it just went down. Um, we What we could do is uh, give it a few minutes to see what happens. And uh, Mayor, if that would be the case, since this is the last item, we could go into communications where there's no voting. Sure. Uh, and then uh, I know they must be listening to us. Oh, it's up. Uh, it's it's up. back up. We're good. Back up. Yeah. All right. Very good. Quick okay. fix. Yeah. <laughs> we have a great team here. And I, I really appreciate everybody's patience and diligence with making things like this work. And you guys always make it work. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, so are there any questions before a motion? I'll entertain a motion then. I'll move it. But I, I uh, sorry. All right, so Larry's moving it. I need fast enough. But I, if Commissioner Simmons wants to go, I want to just clarify some things uh, through it. So if you want to let Commissioner Simmons ask his questions first, I would appreciate it, Mr. Mayor. So Commissioner Simmons, did you second Commissioner Vignola's motion? Uh, sure. Okay. Yes. I, I want to make changes to it with my motion. I didn't get to finish. Okay, well then, that's what I'm saying. I wanted to ask a question before the motion was made. It just... Well, let's hear the questions first. I'm sorry. <laughs> Couldn't unmute fast enough. Um, uh, it's, it's a simple question. Uh, so um, as we all know, uh, this has been quite an issue for uh, some time. Uh, dealing with uh, the, the soccer program and the travel soccer and all that. Uh, and so um, uh, to Rob and Luis, um, you know, what, I guess, what type of, uh, do you see, do you foresee uh, any issues uh, with this travel program, um, you know, going forward? I mean, obviously we can't make everybody happy, but like, you know, what, you know, anytime you make a, a, a decision and you move forward with it, there will be people that are going to be unhappy. Uh, and so I hope, I, I'm sure that you all have thought about that. And so in what ways do you think uh, that people will kind of, you know, be unhappy with this or, you know, see it, you know, maybe look at this a certain type of way? Like, how do you think um, this could be received? Mr. Mayor, before Rob uh, answer, answers that question, or Lewis, I do want to let you know there were no protests to the bid process uh, or to the RFP process. So there were no formal protests. Uh, Rob or Lewis, if you guys want to take that question. Yes, Frank, if, if you don't mind me just uh, uh, adding to your comment, uh, it, I feel completely uh, comfortable with the procurement process as it was. There were no prote protests and there are no protests to this. Um, it was done completely open. We had uh, a very uh, extensive uh, advertising campaign to get this out uh, so that everyone uh, was aware we held a four or five hour pre-bid meeting where we went over the entire um, document to explain everything to everyone who showed up. Uh, it was well attended. I, I, I remember correctly, there's at least a dozen people there from the multiple uh, groups um, that bid. It was completely uh, open to, to, to the presentations, to uh, everything. So I, I feel comfortable in that sense. Um, as to the operation aspect, I don't know if Rob wants to take that on. Um, that's more his side. I can only speak on the procurement and how we handled that. Thank you, Lewis. Rob, do you foresee any operational issues uh, with this program? I do not see any operational issues with this program. It, it, just like on any of these travel programs that are out there, it's, it's you know, some people are gonna like Rogers, some people are gonna like other instructors. So it, it, this actually gives them a choice. They can stay here in Coral Springs and if they don't like the instructors that we have here, then they got other instructors they can choose from, uh, from other travel programs that are around us. So 
I, I just believe that we give the residents the option that, that, that if they, you know, for a program here to stay and establish in Coral Springs. And uh, the, the big reason why I think that this is the best program uh, uh, for Coral Springs was this, this is a, a development program with a competitive aspect to it. So there will be some competitive aspects to it, but the, the, the main focus of this is to develop our, our talent, our players and, and play towards our abilities. Now, some people will, will say that, you know, how parents are, their, their kids are always better than what they are. They should be in the A team and the elite and everything else. So if that's what they feel, then they have that option too with the other organizations. But for the betterment for Coral Springs, I don't think we'll have any issues because we label this as a developmental program with a competitive aspect to it. Great, thank you. Commissioner Simmons, does that answer your question? Yes, that's it, so thank you. Great, Commissioner Vignola, do you have questions at this juncture? Um, I don't have questions. I'd like to clarify some things that I think um, need to be clarified with this. And I'd like to do that with my motion, if that's okay, Mr. Mayor. Give it a shot. So I'd like to move to approve, but I wanna make a couple of changes. Uh, with the motion, I'd like to add in um, 13B2, um, it says um, for um, purposes of meeting residency, um, children attending a public school within the city of Coral Springs, I'd like to uh, change that to, to attending a public school zoned for Coral Springs children. Um, the reason is if you uh, go to Stoneman Douglas or one of the schools where Coral Springs kids go to, um, I think we should count them for it. I know we do with a lot of our scholarship programs, we do with team political form. If a student lives in Tamarack, and they're zoned um, for Taravella. We treat them as if they're one of our kids, and, and um, I'd like to see that continue with this whole thing um, with the residency requirements. The other um, two things I'd like to change is one, it says the city will provide up to four fields. I believe the original intent on that um, was to a minimum of four fields. Um, so I'd like to um, add that to it. And then the other thing is the age ranges is U9 to U19. Um, I'd like to make that uh, U8 to U19. Um, and uh, that'll be in my motion with those changes. So uh, Commissioner Vignola, I have a question about the first aspect. Well, should we, should we, should we second that to get into discussion? That's, I, I think that's proper procedure. Yeah, I'd like to ask him a question. So if you don't mind, I'm gonna ask him the question. <laughs> okay. So Commissioner Vignola, so I'm clear about the first aspect of your motion. Um, when you're saying a school, what school are you thinking might be excluded by what's being proposed? So originally when this, the, the intent of this, the way this was written was meant to do what I'm saying. It's just the, the verbiage was, was um, not done, honestly, to my satisfaction uh, in reading it over. Um, but I know uh, I had spoken to Rob earlier, and that was the intention of doing it. But you, you talk about schools like Douglas, um, Westlades, uh, Pine Trails, Heron Heights. They're all kids that are zoned for Coral Springs. Our, our, our students that live in the Coral Springs part of Heron Bay go to school there. Um, and, I, and I think it's fair to treat them like we would, um, you know, the kids from Tamarack that, that go to Taravella, the kids from Margate that go to Coral Springs High, um, and those. So and I know that was the intention originally with this. Um, so, you know, all, all the things I'm, I'm looking to change here, um, except for the age aspect, I believe was the original intent. Um, and if the mayor would ask the city manager to go to our parks and rec director, I'm sure we can clarify that. Okay. At this juncture, I'll take the second. Second. All right. Seconded by Commissioner Simmons. Discussion. Vice Mayor? You've got to unmute yourself. Sorry, I um, am supportive of most of Larry, the all, I forget how many, there was like three or four. It was the last one that I had a question for Rob or Lewis about the age. I mean, we set it, you set it at nine and Larry's saying eight. How do you feel about that? The way, the way soccer is, is organized, it's under nine. So um, the way Roger would handle that is if he has a, a team that is quality eight-year-olds and under, he would put an eight-year-old team out there. So he would play a U8 if he had it. So he put U9 so he can open it up and, and find out his talent pool that he gets. So anybody under the age of nine in soccer, you can always play up. You can't play down. So uh, 
if, if as long as uh, he has enough talent at those age groups, I don't think he's going lower than eight though for, for a group. So the seven year old have to play up to eight, eight year olds. But uh, I don't think it's unreasonable to ask that request. Um, but I think that uh, Rogers uh, intent was just, if he had enough people that he could pull from for the U8, then he would put a U18 Please. together. Mr. Mayor, if I may. Sure, Frank. If, if we had if we had the team to do it, I think we, we, we could accommodate it, but we wouldn't require him to put it together. Yes. Gotcha. Commissioner Vignola. Yeah, and, and the only reason why I'm saying this is because my, my daughter last year was a U8 player. Um, she was seven years old, and she ended up playing on a U10 team. Um, but I, I don't, you know, for, for age ranges, U9 to U19 is, is how this is written. And I want to make sure we don't exclude those kids that maybe are a little bit higher level. And if they go back out there at rec, um, you know, it's sometimes it's an unfair competitive advantage to have a player like that where they really need that extra level and travel is a better fit for them. Um, and so I, just because it says age ranges, not, not um, you know, the, the team, that's the only reason why I um, had that comment there. Yeah, I echo, I echo Frank's comments. So if there's, if there's ability there, we would do it. Great. Any uh, further questions or comments? Yeah, yes, Mr. Mayor, I have a I have a question for clarification. Um, Commissioner Vignola, can you, um, I guess, expand on the the four field part of your motion? <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, is that okay? Please. Yeah. So um, uh, the the bid um, the way it went out is said that, that we would, the city would provide up to four fields. I don't want to see us if we have a successful um, uh, soccer program here, whether it be next year or, or five, six years down the road, um, and there's room for them to grow. I don't want it to be limited to up to four fields by based off of what we prove. If we, um, you know, a minimum of four fields, I think is, is appropriate if they need it. Um, and then the parks and rec director, uh, the city manager and staff would be able to go ahead and allow them if, um, they are growing and they're growing in the right way to allow them more fields if the ability uh, to provide fields is there. But with the amount of turf fields that we currently have as a city, I imagine the fields will be a lot more available. And if there is room to grow, I don't want to see us go ahead and turn down Coral Springs residents and to cut kids um, because we, we run out of fields to run a successful program. Uh, thanks for your Mr. clarification. Mr. Mayor, if I may. Sure. Um, the, the intent was to not give them uh, you know, more than the four fields unless it was needed. And that was that the intent was to give Rob or the, the parks and rec director the option or the ability to give more fields if needed. So are we talking about a minimum uh, commissioner Vignola of four fields if needed or a minimum well, of four fields period? That's fine. And, and if, if I may, if they, if, but, but we'd also don't want to go the other way of if they only need two fields, them coming back and saying, well, I have a right to four, I'm taking all four. So we, we operationally, we want to give them what they need, but that needs to be at the discretion of the parks and rec director. So John, I don't know if you can help us out here with warding. Yeah, I think what we can say is uh, uh, it is anticipated that it will, uh, that this, this uh, program will take four fields, which can be adjusted based on, on need up or down. And I, I'll tweak that a little better, but if the, is that your intention, uh, Commissioner Vignola? Does that work? Absolutely, sir. Okay. So that will be, it's anticipated that they will use four fields, which will be adjusted as needed at the discretion of the Director of Parks and Rec. That's what we'll say. Also sounds good to you, Commissioner Simmons, as a seconder of the motion. Great. Any uh, further discussion or questions? I'd like to just make a couple comments, please. Go right ahead. So, um, as chair of the sports coalition for the last nine and a half years, um, one of the biggest headaches we've had has been our travel soccer program that used to be recognized in the city of Coal Springs. Um, there's been a lot of headaches. There's been a lot of concern. There's been a lot of complaints by parents. Um, at, at, at least one point, um, they, we know for a fact they were cheating the city out of tens of thousands of dollars. Um, this, this club and, and this bid and, and the work that staff put into this, um, is, is pretty amazing. There was a lot of time and thought over the course of a very, very long time. I know the bid went out in February, but this was discussed for probably another two years before that um, to get to the place where we're at. Um, and, and full disclosure for the record, uh, Mr. Thomas, um, Roger, um, my daughter, I have two daughters that play in, in another club that he's run. Um, and and the, I've also had a daughter play in the, in the former Coral Springs club. 
and the difference um, in, in just the way that the club was run and, and working with the community and stuff, um, I think is, is impressive. I think it'll be a very big asset to the city. He, he ran a club in, or was a part of the Coral Springs club many, many years ago and was very successful and had a great partnership with the city of Coral Springs going back um, more than a decade ago. Um, so I'm, I'm very happy with this. And I thank staff tremendously for um, going ahead and going through this process. Great. So I just want to add during this time to be able to vote on something like this. It's great. It's great. Any further discussion? Yes, Mayor. I just also like to make a few comments. Um, I just, I have to commend staff on a job well done with this entire process. Um, I have to echo Commissioner Vigno's um, comment about that this has been a little bit of a concern, uh, especially with my three kids going through the travel soccer program as they were growing up. Uh, there were some good times and some challenges. I just want to say that uh, the two finalists, I thought that we could have gone, um, you know, the right way either way, but uh, we definitely uh, have picked a great company to take this on. And I'm looking forward to the success. I mean, we have uh, one of the best recreational soccer programs in the country. And now we're moving towards one of the best travel uh, programs in the country. So I think this commission um, and the and city staff have done a great job trying to put this in place. And Mr. Mayor, just, I just want to uh, say one more thing. One of the cool things I like about the way um, this gentleman runs a club is for the entry level right out of rec, um, there is a place for those kids there. And for the kids that are extremely high level, um, there is a place for the kids there. And when it gets to the point where those kids don't have that level and the team around them, um, they'll have no problem sending them off to a countywide club or, or an MLS style club. Um, and, and so I think, you know, looking out for the kids first is, is at the heart of this. And, and I think Roger will, um, will do that. And it'll be very, very good in the long run for the residents of Coral Springs. Great. Thank you. So I want to thank staff as well and Commissioner Vignola. I want to thank you as well for your diligence, your participation, your support of the soccer program, and for you taking such a close look at this item and making the suggestions you have. Thank you very much, Commissioner Vignola. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. All right. Carries unanimously. We're on to Commissioner of Communications. Um, and I just want to make sure, Frank, in your report, you're going to share an update about COVID and, and resilience, and we'll allow uh, Jared and Dr. Antevi to share. Absolutely, Mayor. If you'd if you like, I could go over that, give that overview. That and that, Why don't we that, do that now? That might spark some questions for the commissioners or that. some comments. <clears throat> we do have some special guests with us. Uh, appreciate you guys sticking out. We have uh, Jared Smith from, from Broward Health Coral Springs. We have Dr. Uh, live from Coral Springs, uh, we have Dr. Peter Entevi and Dr. Paul Pepe. Dr. Entevi and, and Dr. Pepe are, are medical directors for the Coral Springs Park and Fire Department along with uh, a bunch of other duties they have. So we're very fortunate to have such a group of medical professionals with us. And, and uh, I just wanna say thank you to all of them. Uh, they've been tremendous partners with us and uh, there haven't been questions that we've asked that have that have gone unanswered. They've they've done a tremendous job, and we're very lucky to to be affiliated with such great talent. Um, <clears throat> since our last commission meeting, uh, there have been some important updates for the commission. Uh, as you know, we we went over some of the orders uh, earlier, uh, where we are now requiring uh, face coverings uh, within within the city of Coral Springs with throughout Broward County. Um, basically, the intent is that your face is covered. Um, I do want to make it clear for the public. <clears throat> we've had a couple people, for one reason or another, uh, say they couldn't wear a face mask because of either claustrophobia or inability to breathe. Um, they need to have some type of face covering. And, uh, you know, one of the docs can, can weigh in on that when I'm done giving my update. But what we're trying to do is stop the spread of of uh, you know uh, either a cough or a sneeze or or, or or any kind of droplets that come out. So uh, we did get some questions on that, and I do want to make it clear. But it is required uh, to have a face covering uh, when you're out in a public place where uh, social distancing cannot be achieved. Now, if you're out doing exercise and nobody else is around you, you don't have to have it on. It's when you're in an, an environment that social distancing cannot be achieved, like out shopping or something like that. 
these are consistent with the CDC guidelines that were put out. Um, and uh, we are, uh, again, we are trying to follow that. PD and code are doing a great job at going out and, uh, and, and advising our community what this means. Communication and marketing made up a nice card uh, to, we can hand out to people. So if somebody is not wearing a face covering, we can give them an informational uh, card that has the requirements on there, the whys and actually how to make one at home. There's instructions for that on, on the card as well. Um, we amended our emergency order for delivery hours. Uh, that was going to actually expire today. So we extended that, which allows for all of our big box stores to get deliveries whenever they can. Um, it's important for us to keep the shelves full, to keep the supply chain going. So we want to make sure that that happens. So we're allowing those stores to get deliveries whenever they need to and whenever they can. We had a uh, food distribution yesterday partnered with Feeding South Florida that went extremely well. Uh, very proud of staff um, and their efforts <clears throat> that they put forth in putting this together. Um, we were able to hand out uh, we were able to hand out food to more than 700 families in a matter of about two hours and 15 minutes. Um, we were able to also deliver uh, some food to some of our um, um, uh, at risk uh, community. So that went amazing. Uh, um, Alex Falcone, uh, who who will uh, weigh in here in a second if I miss anything, I just want to commend him for chairing that and heading that up. Um, along with, uh, you know, some folks uh, uh, from our staff that just did an amazing job and all the volunteers that came out. And I appreciate the commission for being out there with us as well. We will do another one on Tuesday. Um, anybody who's interested in going out there, please get there early. We are limited to the amount that we can give out. Uh, this Tuesday, we had people lining up as early as 530 in the morning. Um, and, uh, you know, we started distribution at about 830 in the morning. So we're, we're scheduled to start distribution of the food at nine o'clock, uh, at the Coral Square, Square Mall. There will be signage out there, uh, in order to, uh, to guide you in the right, uh, right direction. So, um, the little bit of overview on the cases in, in Florida and Broward County and, and, uh, in Coral Springs, I'll give a quick overview and then I'm going to ask, uh, Christy. Uh, and then uh, Jarrett and the docs to to weigh in on this. So <clears throat> we're we're pretty, um, you know, we're I would say the cases in in Florida and, and in our area were were really predicted to do something different than they're doing. And uh, although the numbers are high uh, and and they continue to go up slightly, it could have been a lot worse. So I want to commend the community. And I want to commend staff and I want to commend the leaders for doing what they're doing, because I do truly think, and obviously the, the hospital for the level of care that they're providing, I truly think that making a big difference in, in, in what is happening with the numbers. And what I mean by that is basically since the beginning of April, we've hovered around statewide about 12 to 1300 people a day that were being added to the uh, list of, of those infected. Well, over the last, um, week, a little bit more, we're around the 1,000 to 1,100 mark. Um, and then there's been a couple days over the last three days, uh, two of the last three days where that number has been uh, around five or 600, and then it's gone back up. Now, I do think we will see these peaks and valleys. That's going to happen. And as we expand the testing, I do think we'll start to see more positives because the more you test, the more sampling you have, and the more obviously we're gonna add to the numbers. But right now in the state of Florida, it's a little over 10% of the people tested are coming back positive. In Broward County, it's around 12% of the people that are tested are coming back positive. And in Dade County, it's around 17% of the people that are tested are coming back positive. So uh, the, the one thing that we are, uh, we're watching in, in, in it, 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 the one number that we, we really watch is hospitalizations. Um, and right now we're at about 3,200 people statewide that are hospitalized. Uh, there is, and Jared can correct me if I'm wrong here, and Dr. Dr. Pepe, Dr. Lai, Dr. Antevi, there is no anticipated shortage of hospital beds. Uh, I think South Florida, Florida in general, but South Florida is, is, is prepared if there is going to be a spike or an influx. We do have several field hospitals that are set up and have not been activated yet. So I do think there's tremendous capacity out there if we need it. Um, all of the models we're looking at is showing that there will not be a shortage um, so if, if Floridians keep up the good work that they're doing, 
I do think that they will save lives and they will save people the the uh, pain of having to go through this this uh, this illness. So I'd like to pause there. I'd a- like to ask Alex and and, uh, and and Christine to kind of just weigh in on what what trends we're looking at, and then I'd love to hear uh, one of the docs, uh, uh, you know, just comment on anything that I said. And please, if I said something wrong, please correct it for the record. Thank you, Frank. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to <clears throat> just have Christine Mucci give us a quick overview. She's uh, heading up our planning and data analytics section for our, our city. Um, if Christine, if you could just go through some of the trends we're seeing with new cases, um, provide an overview to the commission, please. Uh, yes, to kind of echo what uh, city manager uh, Frank Babnick said, there is a 12% for Broward. As compared to Palm Beach, they have less cases than us, but their uh, positive rate is actually higher than us. They're at 12.7. So compared to the Tri-County area, Broward County is actually doing their best. Uh, Coral Springs specifically, we have the, over the past since March 23rd, when the data first came out, we have on average about five cases new a day, which is relatively low compared to the, the top five most populous cities around us we've consistently been the lowest in terms of numbers and in terms of infection rate. And uh, this is all due in large to a lot of our social distancing measures that were put in place. And that's about it. The one thing I do want to, uh, Chris, thank you very much, Christine. You did a great job there. And and then I'd like to give uh, the docs, if we may, Mayor, a chance to, to weigh in here. Uh, and Jared, if you'd like. Um, The one thing I do want to add is the numbers we're giving you are the numbers of cases from day one to today. That does not, those numbers do not include, they don't go down when somebody recovers. These numbers are in totality. So that doesn't mean that's how many people out there today that are infected uh, with, with, or or affected by this. Um, So uh, Dr. Tevi, you want to add anything, Dr. Pepe? So uh, Mr. Mayor uh, and commissioners and the, Uh, Frank Babinick, thank you very much. I've never been more proud of what our EMS community, our medical community has done than since this COVID crisis. Uh, I would say sometimes it takes a crisis to unite the community, but our our group has never been more nimble and more ahead of the game. And it shows with what all the things that were done at this city to prepare us for this. I can happily say as the medical director, and I want to get, I want to get Dr. Pepe here in a minute, but uh, knock on wood that we, we do not have um, any of our fire and EMS personnel uh, infected. And that goes to the fact that ever since January is when we started with your leadership uh, and, and guidance, we started actually preparing for this. And so um, very, very blessed also to have people like Dr. Pepe, who essentially is kind of leading the entire uh, kind of world response. He gets us on webinars at, uh, twice a week so uh, we're blessed to have him here. So Dr. Pepe, can you uh, give us a couple of words about what's going on really globally? And then I'll, I'll finish it up with what we're doing here locally. Well, I think that uh, you guys know pretty much what's going on because the media stay on top of it. On the other hand, um, and by the way, first of all, I just want to say uh, thank you very much, Mayor Brook and uh, Vice Mayor Carter and Commissioner Sarah Simmons. And Vail. You haven't met me yet, but I think that they're just trying to protect you from me and my bad puns, you know, we'll see. <laughs> and also, uh, actually, by the way, it's really cool to hear about things other than COVID and toilet paper. So it's great. So what Dr. Uh, you know, Antavia was saying is that on a global level, my job is to coordinate communications between all the jurisdictional medical directors for the 911 systems uh, uh, for the 50 largest in the fire department medical directors for the 50 largest cities in the U.S. and their counterparts in Europe, such as, I don't know, Paris, <laughs> Berlin, um, et cetera, and you know, Australia, key metro cities in the Pacific Rim. I, I, today alone, I've talked to everybody from the medical director from New York to I don't know, Seattle, Manila, et cetera, and the, the director of the from, of EMS for the feds. The reason I'm telling you that is that it, what's been very cool is that that helps us maybe stay ahead of the curve of what's going on. I don't mean the epidemiological curve. I mean, just in terms of the operational stuff. But on the other hand, uh, what's been really cool, especially with Dr. Antevi's contributions down here in South Florida, where we're making contributions worldwide and they know it's coming out of Coral Springs, several, uh, let's say, very ambitious scientific um, uh, initiatives we've got here have been getting out there and it's been really uh, very much fun. The last thing I wanted to leave you with is that, um, 
and this is going to sound like I'm being patronized or blowing smoke, but um, first of all, in the case of Chief Ben Nally, um, you know, he had tough shoes to fill with uh, Dr. with uh, Chief Babinek and uh, now your uh, manager, and um, and yet he's done a great job. I've been personally in those meetings early on where that department was already making moves that actually did help this populace and also gave us some it continued to be a place that be fed the role modeling for the rest of the communities around here. And then secondly, um, uh, not only, and I got to personally see his leadership style and it's fantastic. And Dr. Antebi though, I used to always consider him kind of a protege. He has outdone the master, so to speak. He has been taking a great leadership role for all of South Florida and quite a, frankly across the state and as a result nationally and internationally uh, by organ. He's tireless, he doesn't sleep. I was talking to him at two o'clock in the morning today and he is just at it doing it. So um, that's, I'm really privileged to be associated with you in Coral Springs, by the, quite frankly. And uh, so thank you very much. I, I really do appreciate it. Hopefully we'll come back and see you in person sometime. Awesome. Thanks, Dr. Pepin. Uh, I really appreciate that. And just want to give you a couple of updates that we're working on really strongly. Our Achilles heel, if, if there's going to be one, is going to be the ALFs, the assisted living facilities. Um, not only do we do the, the Facebook Live with the community every Monday, but every Friday we have all the ALFs on there. We record it. And we have a community paramedic calling them uh, to make sure that they're doing okay. Uh, we have 52 ALFs in the city. We're in contact thanks to uh, people like Alex Falcone, uh, Chief McNally, Chief Mosier's on those calls every week. Uh, we need to keep those places as clean as possible and get through this uh, effectively. Other thing is that we're, we're starting some research, uh, big research projects with respect to testing. And I thank uh, Chief, uh, Chief Babinek and, and Chief McNally for that. Um, and that's, that's gonna be coming soon. And we're also now uh, um, launching a big plasma drive. And so uh, we, we, we're gonna be encouraging people who have had COVID who have been resolved of their COVID. There's a very simple mechanism. We're gonna be getting that out across Bar Broward County. We'd love Coral Springs to actually make that happen through the city uh, if, if possible. Um, the more people that can donate plasma, one person's plasma can cover three people. One of our own tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. is gonna be donating his plasma and that's gonna be going to one of our own in the fire department in, in another agency. So um, I re really encourage everybody to, once that process is really developed for every city to take that on, um, lives can be saved and the earlier we get the plasma, the better. And plus you can donate your blood too at the same time. So it's, it's really a double whammy. Um, so uh, I wanna thank you guys for your commitment, your support, and um, let's get through this. Uh, and I think that our peak is still not there yet. We have a couple more weeks to get to the peak. And then once we ride that curve down, we still have to be very kind of careful about being in public. I agree with the covering when you're in public area um, and really just being careful. This is not gonna be over uh, anytime soon, but I think we'll get through it together. And I'll pass it back to you. Thank you so much. Oh, but Peter, you, Don. If you don't mind, I just wanted to quickly emphasize that point. Remember, what we did was we blunted the curve epidemiologically. You've heard that, um, you've seen the graphics of that. And again, it doesn't mean it's going away. It's still gonna be there. We just slowed its progression so that we could protect the hospital systems and so on that we need so badly. So be prepared because this is gonna go on for longer than you think, uh, or it's gonna rebound. Thank you, Doc. So Mayor, um, I, I, Jarrett, uh, you know, in, in Broward Health Coral Springs and Dr. Lai and Allison, we, we couldn't ask for better partners. Uh, anytime we call uh, and need something, they're there. So um, I talk to Jared on a regular basis and, uh, you know, we talk today about different ways we can help the community and partner, but I'd like to just maybe give them a couple minutes to give us an update from the hospital and what you guys are seeing and if there's any needs you have. Sure. Uh, th uh, thank you, City Commissioner, City Manager, uh, Mayors, EMS, and everybody uh, on the call. You know, I agree with all the comments that you've said earlier, particularly on the data and uh, the availability of beds. I agree as well with Dr. Ann Tevi, and a thank you to Dr. Pepe. Uh, you know, first at a very high level, if you think about it, uh, the last time that we had this call, we were really ramping up our resources, making sure that we had the appropriate amount of PPE. Uh, ICU beds, uh, physician uh, capacity, uh, staffing capacity, ventilators, and all that. Uh, we've done just that. You know, we are very, very prepared. Uh, what we have seen along the lines that you mentioned about the data uh, a few minutes ago is uh, a normalization of, of that of the data. In fact, it's, it's really flattened, and if not, it's come down a little bit over the last week here in the hospital. 
Uh, so that's all good news. And I think that is a result of the collaboration and the efforts of the city and all of the residents that we are here with the social distancing. Um, but we have seen uh, that normalization uh, here. So we've uh, been able to uh, manage appropriately. Our goal is to stay ahead of the curve at all times. Um, so that's really good news. Uh, here at the hospital, um, since we last spoke, we did start the Abbott testing, which is the PCR testing. And we're doing that for all of our inpatients. Uh, that makes a, a, an incredible difference. Uh, we have two systems here, so we're able to test uh, and get results within 15 minutes. Um, I just want to say thank you to all of you as well. We do have great collaboration with, um, you know, fire rescue, EMS, uh, police, uh, as you uh, indicated, we do talk pretty much every day. So thank you for that. Um, but also a special uh, thank you to the community. It is truly un uh, unbelievable what we are seeing here. The outpouring of love from the community to our staff and our team and our nurses and the clinicians. I can't thank you enough. I mean, you know, every day someone is, uh, you know, so generous, whether it's businesses, uh, individuals with, um, you know, donations of lunches or dinners or food or snacks or masks or you name it. Uh, and that really goes a long way, you know, uh, when they hear that the city is behind us as well, I, I think it really does make a difference. So I wanted to thank you for that. Uh, and just on a positive note, we've really had some really great uh, stories recently. Uh, you may have seen uh, two, uh, a husband and wife that was discharged yesterday. They had tested positive for COVID. Uh, they were both admitted to the hospital for four days and they were released and there was a, a great uh, cheer where all of our staff kind of came down to celebrate uh, their discharge, along with a, a 97 uh, year old lady who was in the Sun Sentinel, uh, Miss uh, Jean Bacard, who was uh, uh, discharged and uh, successfully has you know, fought against COVID-19. So the efforts uh, across the county, across the city are unbelievable. So thank you for that. Um, if it's okay, I'll flip it over to uh, Dr. Lai, our medical director over our ER, who's truly on the front line. And Dr. Uh, Lai leads an incredible group of uh, physicians, mid-level providers and staff here at the hospital 24 seven. So uh, thank you for your time. Great, Dr. Lai. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Vice Mayor, Commissioners and everyone on the call. Um, yes, I just wanna say, you know, I'm extremely proud of the work that we've done and everything that we prepared for um, kind of speaking to my counterpart, I have a colleague up in New York and talking to him and, and what they've gone through. And I just kind of want to get some advice like, hey, were there some things that you weren't prepared for that you kind of wish you had? And, you know, kind of going list by list, like uh, it kind of checked off all the boxes that we've already done. So when I kind of share that with him and, and how our hospitals prepare, our department has prepared and, you know, uh, he, sound, he, he said like, you know what? You guys sound like you're more than prepared. So, you know, I'm glad to see like the slight kind of decrease in the numbers, but still, we, we still um, are not letting our guard down. We are expecting a lot worse or, you know, we will be prepared for a lot worse. But I truly feel like we are given the best care possible to all our patients. When it starts from EMS, when, when the EMS, Dr. Antebi, Dr. Pepe's lead, you know, their crews bring the patients in and give us the alert you know, we're, we're primed and ready, you know? Um, and I really feel like Broward Health Coral Springs is uh, pretty, pretty much top notch on, on what we're providing. We, we're able to use the information that we've gathered from our, our counterparts in, in New York and, and other parts of the world and just kind of giving our patients, you know, the best chance when it comes to treatments uh, to help them fight this COVID. And we've had a lot of success stories and, you know, even the ones that don't make the media, you know, we kind of stay in touch with them and a lot of recovery, so I'm very proud of that. And Miss Picard, when I took care of her in the ED, she she was a very feisty one in, in there. So I, I kind of had a clue she was gonna tough that one out. So thank uh, you, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mayor. I have I have some other items to go over, Please. but I'm sure the docs will hang around in case you guys have any any specific questions for them. Um, you heard the ALFs being mentioned. Uh, they are our most vulnerable population. Uh, we are making sure we're, we're working hand in hand with them to make sure they have all the tools and resources they need. The hospital has been very helpful in that. We've had a couple situations where we've had to go out and ensure uh, uh, that the, some residents were okay and the hospital partnered with us on, on doing that. Uh, and um, we're, we're making contact, as Dr. Ntevi said, we're making contact with them on a regular basis uh, and making sure that, that they're good. I want to thank the, uh, the Rotary Club of, of Coral Springs donated uh, 2,500 surgical masks 
to go out to our most vulnerable population. That was awesome. Uh, Lupin Pharmaceuticals uh, donated 2,500 Tyvek suits to Broward Health Coral Springs and the Coral Springs Parkland Fire Department. Again, amazing. Those, those suits are very hard to come by right now, and that was definitely a, a welcomed uh, donation. So I just want to say thank you to them. Our logistics um, uh, continue to work very hard. Uh, they're doing a great job. Uh, we started ramping up for this very early, and uh, we were able to get ahead of some of the uh, some of the supplies that were that were needed, and we've been able to stay up with that. Uh, we currently have uh, we, we have a good uh, amount of supply. Uh, we we feel we have enough supplies to get us through uh, the next several months, and we'll continue to make sure that our supply stays uh, stays uh, in in the proper manner to protect our our responders and our our employees. Um, you know, we talk a lot about the responders. We talk about our hospitals. It all starts with our uh, telecommunicators, um, our dispatchers. They're amazing. This week is telecommunicator week. So if you guys get a chance to thank the uh, our, our dispatch personnel for what they do, they would love that. They're awesome. Second to none. Um, and uh, Chief Barry, I know, is very proud of them. They do a tremendous job, and he should be. Um our parks uh, remain closed, but however, they're being used for passive uses, meaning you can go walk in them. Uh, we're just asking you keep your social distancing, uh, only stay next to the folks that live within your household. Don't in inter intertwine, uh, you know, two households. Uh, make sure you're practicing those, those, uh, those procedures. Our waste transfer station remains open uh, for non-hazardous waste. Uh, residents are required to wear masks when they go there to protect the workers. Um, our community bus is still operational. However, we're looking to uh, change that schedule a little bit due to ridership being down. Um, what else do I want to cover here? Okay, so uh, census. There was a question about census. Uh, I'll ask uh, Susie to pop up here in a second. Um, census, we're at 52% response rate, which puts us in the top 20% reporting in the state. Uh, Susie, anything you want to add to that? No? Okay. So um, next thing I want to talk about is a lot of you have asked uh, about how can we give back to the community, folks that are in need. Um, we, uh, Dale, has, has uh, headed up a, a, a working with our community chest with a Give Where You Live campaign. And uh, we have some good news, had some meetings today. Dale's been working with John's office and, and with staff. Uh, Dale, you want to give us an update on that? Sure, Frank. I'd be glad to. I'm in the dark here. There we go. I can see me. Um, actually, I'm very excited to bring forward um, some very positive feedback that I received today at a special meeting that was held by the Coral Springs Community Chest um, at the request of, of uh, city manager, I went out and looked at some various options we have where we could, um, as a community, give back and help people who are in need. Um, we looked at a couple different things, but we kept coming back to the fact that we've partnered with the community chest successfully over the years. Um, they have served our community well, and um, we went to them with the challenge to try and really look at their model a little differently um, to address the current needs we have right now. And uh, we're hearing from residents as well as small businesses and others that are financially impacted by COVID-19 that, that they need help. And we think it's only gonna get worse in the weeks ahead. So what we presented to them was a uh, temporary financial assistance um, that we would help and support raise funds to give um, support back to people who meet certain criteria. Um, and the way it would work is it would be in the form of assistance with a mortgage payment, paying a medical bill, um, assisting them with paying for a utility bill, things of that sort on a very short term basis. Um, this model has worked for others in the past. It, it doesn't actually put money in the person's pocket, but it would put the money that we raise um, into the needs that they have and, and the community chest would actually pay the person they owe the bill to. Um, so they were very uh, enthusiastic today. There was, um, you know, support across the board that they wanted to work with us um, to quickly deliver this kind of support to people who have needs. And um, 
we're going to be working with them over the next week or two to try and get this up and running. Our communications and marketing team is going to be supporting us and getting the word out. And um, we're very enthused about this opportunity. We know that it's very unusual, hard times for a lot of people. And this is just another way we can help them get through it. Dale, thank you very much. If you could just re you know, remain, I'm sure there's going to be some questions on that. The last thing I wanted to uh, bring up um, uh, is, you know, a lot's been talked about with local businesses and, and how we can help with them. Uh, and, and I know Catherine Givens and Christy Bartlett have been working uh, to, uh, to either grant or loan programs. Uh, so can uh, Catherine and Christy, can you guys just give a, a quick update where we are of how businesses can get the help they need? Sure. Good evening. Uh, the commission funded a grant enhancement initiative for the current fiscal year with part-time grants coordinator for a uh, grants coordinator and access into additional grants utilizing grant software. Bradley Falcone was hired into the role in January and has hit the ground running applying and receiving for grants and launching this software with our current grants manager, Kristen Holowicki. And with this pandemic, Brad was eager to assist the city to create a program to assist businesses as many government programs have the perception of being confusing or difficult to maneuver. Uh, nothing ever replaces having that live person, um, even in a virtual environment. And better yet, a professional that's dedicated to learning how to connect businesses to these programs. So Brad has um, put this together, connecting local businesses to grants. Uh, and so where does the business go? A business can go either to the EDO website, um, then that is coralspringsedo.com, or they can call a hotline, 954, uh, this is the EDO hotline, 954-344-522, I'm sorry, 5772. Let me say that again, 954-344-5772, and they will be prompted um, to then um, go and talk about this program. Now, what we ask businesses to do when they, we ask them to go to the website, uh, the business agent will be directed to fill out a hold um, harmless form. And at that point, Bradley Falcone will vet that um, research, what that business is, and will begin connecting that grant or loan program uh, to them. And it will be on the business to actually apply for the grant or loan. However, um, this is what Bradley's gonna help walk them through, um, just the overall process. So the business will then submit it and we are looking forward to having that great uh, program. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, Christy, you have anything you wanna add? Um, yeah, we've done a ton of research, participated in what seems like countless webinars about these different programs and connected Bradley to some of the best resources that are on our website and that he's participated in as well. So I think we'll have some great information for the local businesses. Thank you very much. Um, and anybody who's, who's out there or needs to direct anybody, our website is packed with information. There's a ton of uh, phone numbers and links on there that um, uh, can guide you in, in, in the direction you need to go. Our, our, uh, our call center continues to operate. So if you're having trouble navigating a website or you have a question, uh, you can always call our, our call center at 954-344-1001. Mayor and Commission, uh, our, our, our great partners and amazing staff uh, stand uh, at the ready to answer any questions that you may have during your comments. Thank you very much. You guys are doing a great job. We're gonna go in the order of tenure. So we're gonna start with Commissioner, Commissioner Vignola. You're muted, you gotta unmute. You see how that works? You caught me off guard and I didn't unmute. Um, something that was brought up earlier and I, I just wanted to um, talk again about uh, our former mayor, Vince Bocard's mother, uh, Jean Bocard. And I'm gonna read a little bit of the Sun Sentinel here. So Jean Bocard, a 97 year old grandmother uh, remembers feeling very sleepy and tired. Her caretaker called 911 when she fell on the floor. It wasn't long before the doctors gave her the news. She tested positive for the new coronavirus. The disease can pose a greater threat to the older patients with underlying health conditions, so her diagnosis was even more frightful. But after a week-long stay at the hospital, the Coral Springs woman has overcome the odds to survive, surprising even her doctor. She recently returned home. She's very special. She's a tough lady, said Dr. Mike Pearl. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have bet she'd come out, but the guy upstairs didn't want her yet. She's a miracle. 
In addition to her age, Bocard has several underlying health issues. Bocard has only, has only one kidney after her bout with kidney cancer in 2005. She uses a wheelchair because of her knee problems. She has ailments that put her in the at-risk category, such as diabetes, heart disease. She has it all, her doctor said. And, and you know, sometimes with, with all the negative stuff out there in the world and all the things going around, um, it's pretty awesome to hear a story like that. And someone that I know we all know personally, um, very, very happy that uh, Jean's still still kicking and going. But I think anyone who knows her and knows uh, the type of woman she is, she is tough as nails. And with the medical staff, uh, the people in front of you, you know, um, our chances here are always uh, much better. So um, I just wanted to, to share that little bit of news with everybody. Um, another thing I wanted to share was um, with the census, um, the U.S. Census Bureau has asked Congress for a 120-day extension on the census um, to get a more complete count. Uh, Congress has not gone ahead and um, uh, made a decision on yet, at least last that I had heard. Um, but obviously not being able to get out there and go door to door to some of the um, underrepresented communities um, will, will uh, make it a little more difficult to have a complete count. So hopefully Congress will go ahead and, and allow that extra 120 days. Um, you know, I, I look around and you see all the names out here on the, on the list and um, you know, Kim Moskowitz, uh, Julie, Sherry, everyone. Um, I miss you guys. I know it's, uh, it's, it's difficult for everybody, and, but it's nice to see all the people there. And, you know, I, I drove by the feud distribution yesterday and to see how well everyone in the city is working together is really not a surprise, but it is, it is nice to see how much um, uh, everyone continues to work as a team um, for the benefit of our residents. We're very, very blessed to have the teamwork. Uh, Frank, your team is, is second to none, and, and we're very lucky to have you guys. Uh, here in the city of Coal Springs. And, and for the doctors here and, and Jared, we, we appreciate you being a part of this, um, helping keep our residents informed and as well as taking care of us. We can't thank you guys enough, our, our medical personnel, um, and uh, you know, looking out for our residents. And, and we do appreciate you. Um, one other thing I want to bring up is as we kind of settle into this uh, weird new normal, right? Um, and with social distancing and things. And, and I know there was a um, Harvard, there was some research that Harvard came out and said social distancing could last, uh, believe it or not, a, another two years. Um, but I know the we do have a primary coming up uh, August 18th, and there's the uh, November 3rd election coming up where you guys will get to choose my replacement. Um, but uh, I want to just let everyone know, go ahead and, and uh, you know, request a, a vote by mail ballot. Go to BrowardSOE.org and uh, very simple, sign up for it. I've done it a lot. I've done it for years and, and I think it's great. It's simple. You avoid the lines, avoid the crowd, which is always a, a good thing now. Um, but I uh, just want to say thank you again to, to everyone and staff and, and continue to work hard for us. And um, want, I'd be nice to be able to get together again. And uh, but we do appreciate everything you guys do. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Commissioner Vignola. Over to you, Vice Mayor Carter. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I definitely second Commissioner Vignola's comments in that the staff has just been amazing having to work through this situation. I am very grateful for the medical support that we have um, within the, our- You're muted. Gotta unmute, Joy. There you go. How far did I get? <laughs> No, I was you just saying, the medical staff. Thank you. I was very happy with the medical staff. I can't believe a piece of paper muted me. <laughs> so I'm very happy and grateful that I get to work with everybody and um, very impressed with the way that we are, we have a hold on this and that we will beat this together. Um, the food drive was awesome. And Frank, the first guy said he was in line at 4 a.m. Not that people wow. should up at that hour. <laughs> So I had some friends from church that said that they were in line at like 630 and they said they felt they were between 175 and 200. So I don't, I think four is a little early, but I'm glad that we had the opportunity to partner with uh, Feeding South Florida so that we could serve um, people who had a need. That was, that was wonderful to me. Uh, communications and marketing. I'm very, very impressed with everything that they have been doing. I think they're doing a wonderful job in helping us keep in touch with Coral Springs. I, I want to comment on um, the speaker, Joe Marrera's uh, comment about uh, some kind of a barometer or a chart or a thermometer that shows, you know how when you're raising money, you have a thermometer that says, here's our goal and here's where we're trying to get. And I thought that was kind of a cool idea. So I just wanted to say, if you haven't already thought of that, which you probably did, I um, 
thought that was a good idea. So as I long like as that idea too. So Agreed. as long as you're at home being safe, please do fill out your census at my2020census.gov. It's very easy, just takes less than five minutes. And if you do have to go out in public, you do wear a mask. I've actually heard on a, a team text today say that they had a neighbor who didn't have a mask, t-shirts, socks. I heard a guy make a mask out of socks the other day, make sure they're not used cut them in half and then you roll the rubber bands around them. So there's always something you can do to protect not only yourself, but those around you. So if you need to reach me, if you have any questions, you can reach out at 954-998-4186 or Joy Carter at CrawlSprings.org. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor, uh, Mayor before you move on, I just want to say uh, that we are, communication and marketing is, is uh, I believe, almost done with uh, a tool very similar to what's being asked for. Um, so during your comments, Mayor, if you want, Lynn can come on and, 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 or, and, or Susie, I know she's unmuted now. They can come on and give you a little bit more if you'd like during your comments, sir. Sure. Be happy to entertain that at that time. Sounds good. We'll go with Commissioner Simmons now. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, uh, this is still very unnatural, uh, for me. Uh, I know, when I was at the, uh, the the food distribution, I had a thought to myself of just how unnatural it was to have that that barrier, you know, between uh, you know myself and others. Um, you know, not that I'm out there, you know, randomly touching everybody, but you know, just even being able to you know reach out and extend the hand and just you know uh, proximity. It's it's a uh, it's very unnatural for me, and I, you know, and I think uh, you know we're all dealing with that right in, in our own ways. Um, you know, I like to say that I'm a, I'm a bit of an ambivert, right? Uh, meaning I, sometimes I'm extroverted, but when I'm, when I'm uh, alone, I like to be you know, by myself. But uh, when I'm out and about and doing what, you know, what we need to do as um, elected officials in this city, um, you know, dealing with this crisis and having to be distant is a little, it's, it's very uncomfortable. It is very uncomfortable. Uh, so I have a couple of comments. Um, I'm glad that we're recognizing, uh, you know, the Fair Housing Act. Um, as you know, redlining uh, is, a, is a, one of those just terrible stains on our history as a country uh, where we, you know, kept, uh, you know, predominantly black and brown people into certain uh, areas of cities uh, throughout this country. Uh, and even to this day, you can still see, uh, the, you know, those boundaries of where people were redlining. If you know what redlining is, uh, that's literally where they, you know, people would only give out loans to black and brown people in certain areas or realtors would only show certain houses in certain areas or lots of communities would um, have restricted covenants, um, literally with language in there saying that black or brown people cannot, you know, live uh, in those areas. And so uh, I'm grateful that we, you know, we did have that Fair Housing Act. Um, you know, uh, the one thing about the COVID-19 crisis is that, yes, um, uh, there, there, you know, a lot of people getting sick. There are uh, countless families throughout this country mourning, uh, you know, family members that they've lost unexpectedly, uh, but it's also showed, you know, bare kind of, you know, a lot of the um, inequities in this country uh, between people. And so uh, I'm grateful that we're still recognizing things that are important that helped uh, move this country forward. And I, and I hope that, you know, as we kind of move past this and through this, we continue to focus on uh, improving, um, improving our country uh, for the better. Um, I also think it's great that um, the state legislature, which, you know, I know it's very rare for me to say something that, that the state legislature did great, uh, but it, it was good that they uh, fully funded the Sadowski Trust Fund. Uh, that's going to help out so many people um, after, uh, you know, we move through this crisis, uh, you know, that's going to help out so many different people of all kinds of walks in life. And so I'm grateful to the state legislature for actually fully funding that, um, this past session. Um, I want to say thank you to, uh, all healthcare professionals and first responders, uh, that are still out there doing their jobs, you know, committed to their duty, uh, making sure that they're rendering aid, putting themselves in harm's way. I think anytime that we speak publicly, um, or even privately, we have to show thanks and give love, uh, to those people that are, you know, sacrificing more than what, you know, we all are doing, um, you know, uh, well, not the doctors on here, but, uh, <laughs> uh, sacrificing, you know, um, you know, while trying to make sure that they, you know, stay committed to their duty. Um, uh, one definitely say thank you to staff, uh, you know, for a, just a great job, um, you know, uh, yesterday, uh, was it yesterday? I'm not sure. I don't know what day it is of the week. I think it's day 3000 of the year 
2,562. Uh, but I, I want to say thank you to staff for just uh, being out there. Everybody was in great spirits. There was no complaining. Um, you know, we were just all chipping in and doing our part. And I think everybody might have just been happy to be outside the house uh, and be somewhere near people <laughs> in some form. So uh, it was really great to see that. Uh, the one thing I'll never forget is the look in some of the people's eyes as they drove by um, and mouth thank you through the window as they drove by. Um, you know, I, I, I am sorry that there were some people that had to be turned away. Unfortunately, that's just how that's just the nature of the things we don't you know, we have limited supplies and we can only give out a certain amount to a certain amount of people. So, um, you know, I'm, we're going to do it every week until we no longer have to. Uh, but, you know, I would hope that you, you know, the people that were able to get food this time or the people that weren't able to get food this time uh, will be able to get some next time and, and, and get there uh, so they can uh, pick up some food for their families. Um, um, also, you know, continue to support local businesses, uh, continue to uh, support them, continue to maybe buy business cards, uh, for, or, I'm sorry, gift cards for uh, people or families that need them. Um, you know, if you're in the, the mindset or the ability to please donate uh, to feedingsouthflorida.org, uh, uh, visit their website and, and give a donation. They are supplying, uh, you know, I'm sure they are maxed out. They, they have never been this active before. Uh, they have been serving, literally serving South Florida uh, since we began this lockdown. And so I'm sure uh, they can use any donation that they can get. Um, second to last thing I want to say, is, or actually backtrack, I want to say thank you to um, uh, uh, city Manager Babinek. I, I know it's going to be like three years before we can actually say City Manager Babinek without stuttering, but uh, I want to say thank you to City Manager Babinek um, for, uh, you know, if you weren't, if you didn't know, there was a, a young lady who had a, a very, um, a very, um, what's the word I'm looking for, an older car that came through the line, the distribution line, and it was smoking. Uh, and uh, as she got towards the end of the line, it, the, her car overheated and gave out on her. And so, uh, you know, myself and a few others, we rushed to push it out the way. Uh, and then, you know, police and fire were over there making sure um, the, the lady was okay. Uh, and then uh, city manager Benek made sure that her car got towed home uh, without charge to her. And I think that was just uh, an incredible act of uh, goodwill and a kind gesture uh, that, you know, uh, goes a long way uh, for someone in that situation. Uh, so I want to definitely say thank you uh, for, for helping that um, young lady out. Uh, Commissioner Simmons, if I may, there's a there's another part to that story. Oh, Lord. So Let's after we it. made after we made sure she got home uh, and, and got settled in, she looked at uh, one of our uh, Chris Bader, who's one of our uh, chief officers, said, you work for the fire department? Like, yeah, well, my niece works for the fire department. So it was actually the the uh, aunt of one of our lieutenants. And we had no clue the whole time. So. Uh, oh, you know, it was kind of uh, kind of interesting, but she was, you know, we were, we were happy to get her home. She was, uh, you know, she she uh, had a little bit of disability and everything, so we were happy to help her out. Oh, that's amazing. See, that's amazing. That's what I love. I love being a part of the city. Man. That's amazing. Um, second to last thing, um, please be patient and kind to your te your your child's teachers. Um, I am seeing, uh, you know, and I get it. Everybody has cabin fever. They're frustrated. You know, they got to do work that they might not understand. Um, but please be kind to your teachers. Um, trust me when I say they're doing the best that they can um, while having to deal with their own children and being in the house and literally dealing with the same, same exact things that you are dealing with. And so that I, I ask everyone to please be kind to your teachers. I'm seeing too much teacher bashing on social media and it's a little disheartening because they really are doing their best they can. And I mean, and for some teachers like me, um, the doing the distance learning is it's also extremely unnatural. I like to be in class in front of my students. And so, um, you know, just please, please, please be kind. Uh, it's, you know, I understand you're frustrated and, you know, maybe you don't, you know, you don't remember algebra anymore, but you know, that's not what this is about, okay? Uh, it's just all of us doing our part. And so the last thing I wanna say is, um, and I know that there are people that have cabin fever. I know there are people that are ready to get back to the world. I know they want things to be uh, normal again, uh, but we cannot rush getting back out there. We cannot do that. I, 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 I literally am with you. I would love to be able to go to brunch again, uh, you know, but, <laughs> We cannot rush this because if, if 
this comes back, it's going to come back stronger. It's going to come back hard. We, it will, it'll just be worse. And so we need to make sure that we do our part and continue to make those small sacrifices uh, while this is going on. So uh, please continue to just be patient. Enjoy your home. Enjoy the time that you have right now. Because I guarantee once we do open back up, everybody's going to be tired. Because we're gonna, everything's going to be on overload. So please enjoy this time. And thank you uh, for that's the end of my communication. You got it. Commissioner Sarah. Mr. Mayor, thank you. And uh, happy belated birthday. I know we celebrated your birthday this past Friday in a small setting, but on a bigger stage. I hope you had a great weekend and a special day. Thank you. I also want to commend uh, Larry uh, Vignola, one of our commissioners, on a job well done with the Sports Coalition over the years uh, with the launching of the um, travel soccer program this year. This is a huge win for our city. Uh, we have picked the right person to run the program. And I know it was a lot of time and effort on your part along with the committee. And uh, I'm very happy that that item passed with modifications and looking forward to not only having the best recreational but also the best travel soccer programs in the country. Uh, Commissioner Simmons, keep fighting a good fight, buddy. You're doing a great job. I've talked to a lot of parents and they're all wanting us to open because they're struggling at home personally. So they have a deeper appreciation for teachers and educators right now. And uh, the parents uh, know what you do on a daily basis. So uh, keep staying positive and keep doing a great job in the classroom. And Joy, I just wanted to thank you for being one of my mentors as I navigate this political process. You're awesome. And uh, it's just nice to know that I can always reach out to you and give me some advice when I, I'm about to walk off the cliff. Uh, I want to reach out to the 1,064 staff members in the city of Coral Springs. And I want to thank each of you from one to 1,064 for a job well done. This is a crazy time and we are navigating uncharted waters, but your commitment and this level of professionalism is unprecedented. And just please know on behalf of myself, my family and this entire commission, uh, we really appreciate what you do. Uh, we may be the ones that were elected you guys are the ones doing the work and uh, just know that uh, you guys are second to none and we just really 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 are fortunate to have you running our city. Um, I have to give a shout out to our city attorney John Hearn and his entire team. Uh, John the commission got it right when we hired you. You are by far probably the best city attorney in the country and your team is very special and they've really done a great job um, getting us through not only past times, but navigating this, you know, COVID-19 and all the trials and tribulations on a daily basis that are, we're incurring. And then Frank, I have to take credit, one fifth credit for hiring you because uh, you're doing a phenomenal job. Um, just city managers that have been in your position for a long time are not carrying a candle to you, buddy. Um, just the level of communication and professionalism and the way you are leading the 1,064 is pretty special. Morale seems to be high, higher than when I got on the commission. And I just want to say that um, I appreciate what you do on a daily basis. Uh, problem. As far as the communication and marketing team, you guys are knocking it out of ballpark. For those of you that are not on social media, they're listening and watching. Maybe you should get on because this is a great way to kind of be in the loop of what's going on. Um, you know, we have a lot of different communication handles. I think there was like 50 of them. Um, this is a great way to just stay in tune. So if you're not a part of it, please join and uh, get that uh, underneath your belt as far as being in the know. I want to also uh, give a shout out to our commission manager, Luam, uh, you are amazing. I, I'd be lost without you. So thanks for what you do. Uh, I'm over graduations. There's going to be an announcement next week. We, My team and I have been working crazy hours to try to figure this out. Um, I am not the superintendent, so I'm not making an announcement today. But uh, we will have an announcement on what's going on with our commencements next week. And I promise the class of 2020, we are going to celebrate you a lot of different ways. And one of them is uh, across the county on uh, the 20th, we're going to light up every stadium uh, at 820 
for 20 minutes to celebrate the class of 2020. So this is one way to, for us to just um, recognize that you guys are going through a very difficult time. I feel awful that you've lost prom, grad bash, senior nights and all the special moments that uh, you're just never gonna get back, but we will make sure that you have a graduation and that's one that you're gonna be proud of. Just a few more comments. Uh, if you didn't tune in on April 5th, uh, our resident uh, doctor and Tevi did a great job in the uh, national spotlight. And I just wanna thank you for all that you do along with our fire personnel. It was nice to see that we're blazing the trail once again and protecting our employees. And uh, it was really nice uh, footage that they did, very brief. I encourage you to go check it out. I believe it's on YouTube. Unfortunately, we are um, celebrating a lot of positive things that we are doing from a professional side, uh, but we have set, had some setbacks and uh, one of those is break-ins in, in our automobiles. So for our residents, please, 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 there's a little bit of spike in that way. Uh, please lock up your belongings. Um, unfortunately, there's some people that don't get it and have bad hearts, but you got to protect your belongings. We don't want you to lose anything more than you already have. Uh, I just want to echo on the 22 grants that we received, the 3.8, the vision there of hiring, um, you know, a part-time employee and the entire team, uh, just phenomenal jobs. I mean, we applied for 52 grants. We've got 22 so far, 3.8. It's just going to grow. Uh, this is a great way to keep our, our uh, budget balanced and uh, prevent us from raising taxes in the future. Uh, great job on the food distribution. I'll be there Tuesday. It's been uh, talked about. And I just want to close by saying that, um, you know, we're all dealing with a lot. I know that uh, I've had neighbors, friends, relatives, my, even my own son has been laid off, furloughed. Um, we're all dealing with this challenge. And COVID-19 has uh, is trying to knock us down, but it's not going to. We got to remain positive. You know, reach out to your loved ones more so than ever. You know, let people know that you appreciate them. Thank the, the first responders and the people that are in the grocery stores, the people that are delivering your mail and picking up your garbage. I mean, there are a lot of heroes out there. They're doing phenomenal things. And, uh, you know, we will get through this, whether it's at the end of the month, May, June, and we will come out stronger. And for all those businesses, I know that you guys are fighting a good fight to just stay alive. We're trying to figure out how you're going to restructure. Please know whether it's personal or professional or a business, your commission and your city staff are here to support you. If I can help in any way or just be a listening ear, feel free to reach out to me at 954-612-7114. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Sarah. You are always an awesome acknowledger, and I really appreciate that. Uh, one of the things that Commissioner Sarah is talking about uh, is resilience. And uh, for those of you watching, listening, uh, recording, um, just stay the course. You are part of something very special in our city. You hear about our staff, our 1,084 employees. I look at this board and uh, I see Alex Falcone who's head of emergency management and Christine Mucci, who's assisting him. Dale Pazdra, head of HR and has been with us for so many years. Uh, Kristen Holowicki is in charge of grants. I see our medical professionals, uh, my team on the commission. Uh, we're part of something very special here. Uh, and we also have to give thanks to you, our residents, because without your general collaboration and cooperation, our numbers would certainly be higher. So I just want to extend my appreciation to all of you for following our safer at home guidelines, our rules, the orders that are put forth. Uh, if you do see something uh, that you think is out of order, uh, you are free to call our non-emergency police number, which is 954-344-1800. And I appreciate those of you that have already done so. I do want to give a few specific shout, out, shout outs and I'll reiterate some of the comments of my colleagues of gratitude. Uh, one is to Jimmy Morell. He donated a lot of masks that he had uh, manufactured with his company to us, and we appreciate that. We have a young woman in our community that has done a lot uh, for many people. Her name is Shelly Sitton uh, Tijelski. Don't know if I'm pronouncing her, her last two names right, uh, but her first name is Shelly. And she came up with a website, uh, which I'd love for us to share. 
Uh, I'll share it now. It's uh, www.pandemicoflove.com. And so far, she's connected about 24,000 people with 24,000 resources. She's somehow matched uh, these needs with, I'm sure, a team of volunteers. And it's been a great way to contribute uh, and also receive during this time. So whether you're in need or potentially a contributor, uh, you may want to check out that website, which is pandemicoflove.com. Uh, another young lady in our community, Shirley Kaufman, uh, had donated about $700 worth of food to our health professionals at Broward Health. So I want to say thank you, Shirley Kaufman, for doing so. Uh, there are many, many others to thank. I want to reiterate what you said, Sean. Really, our, our community here at the city is so excellent. From our city manager to everybody down the line, uh, we couldn't have this organization without each of you employees participating, giving us your heart, giving us your professionalism, and just giving your all every day. It's totally exemplified by the feeding that we all participated in yesterday. It couldn't have been smoother. And there's so many people were so grateful for what we were able to do along with Feeding South Florida and all the volunteers behind that. Um, one of the things that Shelly says in her uh, Facebook thing is, our worth is not what we have, but it's what we give. So with that, I'm gonna take a break, pop it back over to Commissioner Vignola. He wanted to share one more thing uh, and then allow you, Frank, to bring up Lynn to share a little bit about what we're doing. Um, I think it was about the census. So Commissioner Vignola. I just wanted to say uh, thank you to Deb Thomas for making me uh, the mask. I really, really appreciate it. Um, you know, all the things that everyone's doing in, in this time is as terrible as things are around the world. Uh, to see the good in people and, and Deb, thank you very much. And so for those of you that saw the, the picture of us on social media and stuff, Deb made mass and, and gave them out to us. So I just want to say thank you very much. Excellent. Frank? Mayor, I have uh, just a, a couple quick things. One is I would like to ask the commission and John can weigh in here uh, to do a draft and adopt letter uh, to the federal government in reference to loss of revenue. Um, there's a lot out there coming out from the federal government for loss of revenue for uh, businesses and, and such, but there aren't, uh, there's nothing out there for local government. So working through the Broward County City Managers Association, uh, we'd like to send a letter uh, saying any, any help they can give us would truly be appreciated as well. So John, you want to talk us through that a little bit? Yeah, sure, Mayor. Uh, if you would entertain a motion to draft and adopt a resolution to be sent to the, to, uh, the various uh, the members of the federal government. And I'll work with Deborah, Deborah on that um, uh, concerning the lost revenue of the municipalities and, uh, of the city of Coral Springs in particular and looking for assistance if we'd have a motion to draft and adopt that. Great, let's put that out there right now. I, I'd like to make the motion, but um, I'd like to add uh, a bit more to that. Um, I was recently, I was actually on a call today uh, and from what I understand, cities over 500,000, a uh, population over 500,000 will be able to apply to the federal government. However, uh, if it's under that, then they have to go through the state. So I'm figuring out if we can hit both and kind of work that. I don't know, what, what do you think? So, so, yeah, so Commissioner Simmons, um, Catherine's actually been doing research for us on that. And the original thought to that was if you're under 500,000, you had to go through your county. If the county was under 500,000, they had to go through the state. So basically, they escalated the numbers from the city level up to wherever you reach that 500,000 mark. Um, so we are doing some more research on that. Uh, but as far as as far as the letter goes, we'd be happy to make sure we're we're addressing that unless Catherine has wants to uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that. You're not wrong at all. That's exactly what it is. And we'd be looking, other cities are looking at doing this as well. And it would be through the same mode and method as going through CDBG. So that's at a federal level. So we're looking to draft and adopt a letter uh, by the commission for that. Um, Wait, so I heard the motion from commissioner Simmons. Second by Commissioner by Vice Mayor Carter. I saw the mouth movement. You're good. Uh, any discussion? <laughs> All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
All right, carries unanimously. Thank, Thank you. you. Back to you, Frank. Um, and then I'd like to just, uh, Alex, do you have anything? Uh, uh, I, I, I forgot to, to uh, recognize Alex at the end of my briefing. I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything from an emergency management standpoint. And then Lynn and Susie can give us just a quick update on, on the census. Alex? Sure. Well, thank you, Frank. I appreciate that. Um, just a couple of quick updates. Uh, we are working continuously to make sure we're caring for our ALFs. I know that that was brought up a few times uh, on this meeting. Um, we're working, our fire department's been doing an outstanding job checking up on ALFs, providing resources that are needed to ALFs in our senior living communities, and continue, continuing to make sure that they're getting the resources they need. Um, we did get word today that the state has uh, put an incident management team in charge of, of ALF checkups. Uh, they're working in conjunction with the Department of Health and with the Florida National Guard. Uh, they're going to be able to provide localized testing at assist living facilities and nursing homes if there are cases in those locations. So that's really good news for us. Um, it, it provides us with another tool that if there is somebody, God forbid, in one of these facilities that's positive, we can test the other residents. We can get them additional care uh, rapidly. So that is something that's going to be rolled out um, countywide, um, and, and we'll be seeing that shortly. So that's the only update I had, Frank. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Um, and uh, Susie and, and Lynn, did you want to just talk a little bit about what we're doing for census? Sure, very much so. Uh, just quickly, I uh, just wanted to follow up with the census 2020 results are updated every day at three o'clock. And the re you can find that on 2020census.gov. It's anybody in the whole country can look it up and see what, what's going on in their city. So uh, we have the national average right now on April 15th of 49.1% return. Uh, Florida is at 47.4, Broward County is at 45.9, and Coral Springs is at 52.6. So that's good. We're doing real well there. We want to continue to press it. Press it. As you know, we had um, a goal to increase the city's uh, 2010 census re rate response from 73% to a stretch goal of 80% is what we're hoping for this time. That's a big stretch goal, but we're hoping to do that. Each person is worth $1,500 uh, each per year for 10 years. So this is huge. And we have been in touch with our complete count committee people helping to brainstorm about ideas and getting online to newsletters through the places of worship, the HOAs, nonprofits and, and such. So we're utilizing the locations and services that are deemed as essential for promotions right now. So if uh, Lynn can go into the uh, infographic, I think they were working on as well as the barometer. Uh, those are some things that we're looking to uh, bring up soon. Thank you, Susie. Lynn, are you ready? I'm always ready, Mayor. <laughs> so uh, the barometer that Joe Marrero was talking about, actually, we have been working on that. Uh, we had looked into doing something a little more interactive with our commission uh, prior to the crisis. It would have been more of a, a standalone inside a city hall where you guys would have been able to take selfies with it. Um, unfortunately, we know that that's not a possibility right now. So we are looking at an animated barometer uh, and we're just adding the animation to it and we'll have it ready to go. Uh, it'll really give people a feeling of ownership to it. So we're targeting communities that have a lower turnout uh, for their online census right now. And we're able to do that through next door and uh, online targeting for social media. And that's all I have. Awesome. Awesome. So Frank, one of the uh, ideas I have is can we use all of our committee members, uh, those that are willing to share about the census and invite all their people to participate? Um, as, as far as getting the word out yes. um, and, and doing so uh, electronically and virtually, um, yes. I, I don't see why not. If, if we can get a script or, you know, a, kind of a campaign script from Lynn uh, to be able to, and they share that message. Um, Lynn, do you see any, or Susie, do you see any issues with that? No, I think it'd be great to have it on everybody's signature when they send out any email. If you can have it on your signature to say that, Love you know, it. that'd be great. Good suggestion. All right. I'm going to put that on my signature moving forward. That sounds great, Susan. Great. Uh, so uh, uh, one more thing I had, uh, maybe uh, Jared, you can answer, Dr. Lai. I've seen contact tracing in other places, and I've seen some apps actually have been developed in other places. What are we doing here and or what can we do along those lines? 
Jared, you're, okay. you're, you're sorry, I was on mute. Um, you know, I know, I believe it's what Google and, and Apple have partnered together to develop an app for contact tracing. Uh, you know, what can we do here locally? You know, I think, look, um, if you've been tested and um, I'm just thinking out loud, but if you've been tested, obviously, you know about that Department of Health has contacted you as well. I think, you know, you probably have a personal responsibility to contact people that you would know if you tested positive um, to let them know as well to get the word out. I don't think it's anything to be shy about. So I think it probably, uh, there's a lot of responsibility for the individuals. We can't just rely on uh, various agencies such as the Department of Health to do that. You know, I think, uh, you know, you should share your story with people so that people know the symptoms that you had as well and what to look out for. Um, but I think probably the best way, at least initially, is, you know, look, let people know. Don't be, don't be afraid. It can happen to any one of us at any given time. The virus isn't um, discriminatory, you know, so uh, please let people know. That's just off the cusp, but I think we really need to uh, rely on uh, the technology that's out there. Uh, and hopefully, um, you know, the United States, our residents will embrace it. I think that's going to be a challenge, too, to embrace the technology because people don't want necessarily uh, to, to have any sort of surveillance on them. And that's my best. You put me on the spot on that one. All right. Sounds good. Frank, hey, anything doc else to add? Mayor, Dr. Pepe may, uh, you know, from, from a national standpoint, he might have uh, something on that as well. Uh, doc, have you heard of any surveillance programs for, for people that uh, have been affected by COVID? Doc, you're muted. Point, I'm muted. I just want to unmute. Sorry about that. Um, it, yes, I mean, there are, but they're targeting certain areas if that's what you're getting at. Um, and let me, let me just understand again what we're meaning by the surveillance program. What, what would be the, uh, you know, the, the premise of it and what would be happening? Who would be targeted? For me, for me, what I was asking about, uh, sitting in with several other mayors, apparently they developed an app in Reykjavik, Iceland. Yes. Uh, that helps with contact tracing. Yeah, yeah. So whatever that, you know, whatever that app is doing apparently is helping there. So, so that, yeah, that's right. And that can be done. And it, uh, it, as the public health authorities can actually do that, because just like we have reporting for gunshots or various other uh, diseases, uh, that probably can occur. The interesting thing about Iceland, just as a little quick sidebar, I'm glad you brought that up. Small country in a sense that there's about 360,000 people, size of Tulsa. Um, they interesting. They were testing things. Uh, they're they've already gotten to ten percent of the population tested. So that's part of their program that you're bringing up. Interestingly enough, they found other people who were positive. Half of them were uh, asymptomatic. Didn't even know they had it. So wow. they just uh, so that's impressive. And our own CDC. Yeah, I mean that's a small country, different demographic, different place. But our own CDC thinks there's at least twenty five thousand or whatever. So we probably do want to do something along those lines. Eventually, this antibody testing that we're doing here that we're gonna be helping the test. It's not ready for prime time yet, be very frank about it, but we're getting more information and we're gonna get better at it. Will be one of the best things we could do eventually to find out you know, how far it went into the population. But for now, I think uh, what you're talking about is a good idea and they have programs, we can get back to you on that. Great, thank you very much. So a couple of other things I wanted to share before I kick it over to John. Uh, one is at this time, uh, a lot of people are experiencing anxiety, maybe greater depression, and there are definitely resources in the community. One of the best numbers to call to get different resources is 211. And another uh, great number to call if uh, you know of anybody that is really in the darkness is the Suicide Prevention Hotline. That's 800-227-TALK. Uh, today, we received an email at the commission talking about a lot of different resources from CSC Child Services Council. Uh, Frank, one of the things I would ask is if we can share those resources on our website. At this time, that would be very helpful. They have a lot of resources for people uh, regarding mental health, mental wellness. And if we can share that on our website, I think that would be helpful. Lynn, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get Lynn to look into that and link those resources as appropriate. Thank you, I appreciate that. So along those lines, uh, Jackie Rosen and some other uh, people involved in the mental wellness movement here uh, got on the Zoom conference for the Mental Wellness Networking Alliance. And I just want to say thanks to Jackie and everyone that's helping other people 
feel comfortable, be able to move on during this time. Uh, I wanna also reiterate something that Commissioner Simmons indicated and uh, please don't rush, you know, getting out and avoiding social distancing. Uh, definitely you can be antsy. There are ways to be creative. Uh, you know, you can move around in your home, you can do house party, you can do Zoom conferences, uh, but we just want you to be patient during this time as, as much as you can. Uh, two other things, uh, my office hours are this Friday from 12 to 1.30, they are remote. Uh, it's uh, by telephone, and you can schedule that with Luam. Her number is 344-1084, uh, but that's not the only way you can reach me. You can call me directly on my cell. I'm uh, ha happy to help or connect you with any resource I can, and that's 954-494-9872. Uh, it's tough times for everybody, uh, but there are definitely silver linings, and one of the silver linings I think can be uh, we can appreciate our family and a few of the things that we have in our life a little bit more. And it never hurts to have faith. So with that, John, I'm going to turn it over to you for city attorney communication. Thank you, Mayor. As we finish a, a virtual meeting, I know this is not natural for everybody, but I must say I appreciate the, the mayor and the commission, uh, how well this was run. And I really need to thank the city clerk's office, Deborah Thomas and her staff, communication and marketing and IT for making this so seamless. The spirit of the Sunshine Law uh, is clearly here. We have had, our, had, had public comment today, made me happy. So uh, mm -hmm. hopefully that will continue. So I wanna thank everybody for all they're doing and their leadership and uh, have a good night. Great, thank you. Oh, I like that picture, Commissioner Vignola. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. It's great to see you all. You guys keep doing the great work. Uh, I'll see many of you on Tuesday with our masks on, feeding other people. Uh, thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Stay safe. Stay positive. Stay home. Good night. Take care, everybody.